know that you are an overseer. The Holy Ghost has made you an overseer. Who are you overseeing? Number one, you are overseeing fellow brethren like you. You're not better than any man. I'm not standing before you in this service because I'm better than any of you. But because of the privilege God has given me to be used of God to instruct you. I told you the other day, none of us is indispensable. I am not. That's why I strive with care. Knowing that it's a privilege for me to stand before you and bring you the word of his grace. So you're watching over fellow brethren. Number two, you're watching over the flock of Christ. The flock of Christ. You know, David was a shepherd. And the Bible calls us under shepherd. But Jesus is the sheep, sheep, chief shepherd. The Bible calls Jesus the bishop of our soul. The chief, chief shepherd. Look at it in Psalm 78 verse 70. Psalm 78 verse 70. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheep folds. Next verse. From following the eagles, great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. Next verse. He fed them. This is David the shepherd. He fed them according to the integrity of his heart. And he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Two things. Integrity of heart and skillfulness of hand. Training. The heart is right, but you must be trained. It's not enough to have the heart right. You go from right heart to skillful hand. That's why you're in campuses. That's why you're in branches. You're in different campuses all over the world. You're in house centers. So you can be overseen and you can oversee others. You're a shepherd. You're a shepherd. You are an instructor. You are a teacher. Every one of you here. But at different levels. At different levels. Feed the flock. Somebody say I will feed the flock. Yeah. And please feed the flock not for your own selfish purposes. But for Jesus Christ. Feed them for Christ. Don't go and be carrying selfish prophecies around. Thus saith the Lord, buy me a car, thief only, Barao, see your head. Which apostle gave that kind of prophecy? Show me in the whole Bible. Thus saith the Lord, buy me lunch. Those are small boy prophecies. Thus saith the Lord, be my wife, thief. Not in power city. The sisters have a pignosis. They will tell you, thief. Don't say it the Lord, you are a liar. <laughs> Those prophecies are stomach infrastructure prophecies. They are selfish things. Prophecies are not selfish. Prophecies edify. Prophecy is not for personal collection. If you are still seeing that kind of prophecy, you need to be born again. Because the spirit inside you is faulty. Don't say it the Lord, be my auntie. You are hungry. Go to your village, your aunties are there. Don't come here. We say professor to one another. We're not saying go and collect money from one another. It means you have not understood what we're teaching. I'm teaching good. Some people are not smiling now. Because I have caught them. Moving to the congregation, prophesy. Thus says the Lord. Employ me. <laughs> That's not prophecy now. That's not prophecy. That's stomach infrastructure. 
You don't need prophecy. Say, pray for me. I need a job. Don't do says the Lord. Don't do to the flock what Jesus will not do to the flock. Because you're doing this on behalf of Jesus, who is the chief shepherd of the church. As a pastor of this church, I do not lobby around people's resources. I don't go around members begging for money. I don't do that. It's not in my training. It's not in my culture. Even when I'm hungry and I don't have money, I won't, I won't beg you. I won't. I won't. Because I didn't see any apostle doing that. Brother Paul said, we ate no man's bread for naught. I won't do that. You've got to learn my manner of life. Don't only learn my doctrine. Know my doctrine and know my manner of life. How we have behaved ourselves among you. Don't go around lobbying around people's pockets. It means you have not even conquered self. It means you have not even understood the gospel. Am I teaching here? That's why all our campus coordinators are not paid a salary. We don't have such system here. Our campus coordinators take from their own resources to support the vision. All our campus coordinators are people that are gainfully engaged. They have their businesses. They are doing well in their career. We don't bring campus coordinators who are hungry because they will ravage God's people. We don't have such practice in the churches of God. <laughs> eh? <laughs> we make people uncomfortable. No, we don't have such coordinators. Keep begging you money. Seeing vision for you. I just see. I saw. I saw. When he's hungry, he's seen. I saw. Everybody that is hungry sees things. It's natural with hunger. It's natural with hunger to see things. All our campus coordinators are responsible people committed to Christ, love Christ, and they're using their money to serve God. And they're able to bring people together to come and serve God. That's what it is. That's what it is. Somebody came to me and said, I used to be in a particular denomination. They are not paying well. So I have decided to come and be a campus coordinator. I say, you are fired. We will not even pay at all. So go back to where they don't pay well. It's better than here. <laughs> that small is better than our own. Our own is nothing, nothing. It's Jesus that will reward you when we go to heaven. When we get to heaven. <laughs> and about a supper. <laughs> Our own labor here, we are not looking at human reward. We are serving because we believe that the purpose of God for our lives is to bring other people to the light. Beginning from me, your, your senior pastor. I don't take salary. I don't take no salary from this church. I made that decision years ago. I don't want no salary. All the money that comes, let's use it for the work. And including the one that comes to me privately as my own income, let's push it. The important thing here is that this work must be carried out. So if me, I'm not collecting salary. Then you come, you want to work to be paid salary. From where now? The anointing flows from head to bottom. See the way I slap my head? That's how the anointing they flow. From head to bottom. Don't feel pain for me. It didn't pain me. It's my head, not your own. <laughs> 